Hey there kids, welcome to another math lesson on video. This is for Eureka Math Grade 5, Module 4, Lesson 16, Homework. Quite a challenging lesson again today. The objective is at the bottom of the page to solve word problems using tape diagrams and fraction by fraction multiplication. So uh, you should kind of know what you're doing already. I do have a problem set video that I recommend that you go watch before you try this so you can practice with your tape diagrams. Hopefully you've already completed your homework and you are just now checking to make sure you did okay. So let's get into this. Solve and show your thinking with a tape diagram. You should use one on all the problems. They really do help because these are pretty challenging. So we're going to have a fraction of a fractional unit for most things. Number one, Anthony bought an eight foot board. He cut off three fourths of the board to build a shelf and gave one third of the rest to his brother for an art project. How many inches long was the piece Anthony gave to his brother? Okay, so we've got our whole eight foot board. And what I like to do immediately is to think about the fact that we need to have inches for our final answer. So if you would like to know how many inches eight feet is, then you can do your whole conversion process, which you should know. Um, but you do have to know what the unit is. You can do that up here, uh, or you can just say, well, if one foot is 12 inches, then I have that repeated eight times. And so eventually it comes down to 8 times 12, so 8 times 2 is 16, and then 8 times 1 is 8 plus 1 is 9. And then you just put your equivalent right there at the top. And doesn't my scratch, my kitty scratch, look better? Yay! <laughs> no band-aid today. Um, it's healing itself. Miracle skin. Okay, so um, we've got our, our 8-foot board that's cut into pieces, so he's got 3 fourths for his shelf. And then that's gone, so we're not really going to be concerned with that, but we are concerned with this piece, one-third of the rest. Now, what is the rest? Well, the rest is one-fourth, and that's what you really need to pay attention to. So one-third of the rest to his brother for an art project. So we can divide this, the rest, into these three pieces, because this little one-third of the rest is what's going to the, his brother. And then we need to also have an inch amount for this. So you might be starting to visualize because of the tape diagram what you can do to solve. Now some people might want to divide all these into thirds and that would be wise and then you could take uh, just this one piece or um, if you recognize that it's three, six, nine, twelve, that this is one twelfth here then you can, uh, you can start solving at that, 1 12th of 96. You can do all kinds of little pieces. Some kids will say, well, I want to know how many feet were given away. Well, we don't really need to know feet. We need to know inches. So again, really just as soon as you see that you only have 1 third of 1 fourth, that is, oops, I put the answer, my bad. One third of one fourth to give you the one twelfth. That's where I got it. And then we just need to know the the one twelfth of ninety six to get our uh, our inches. Another way kids will think about this: What is um, if they take the one third of how many inches are here? Okay. And so if you get your, um, your division here, and you set it up because it's 1 12th of 96, then eventually you're going to have to divide here. And that's where we got our, um, our 8, 8 times 2. And so if I have 8 inches, 
as my 1 12th, then 1 12th of the board equals, or equals, sorry, I get so lazy, 8 inches for his brother. Bruh. And that's really what they're asking you for, is for those 8 inches. So the fraction of a number becomes a division problem. 96 divided by 12, 96, 3, 6, 9, 12. I just need one of them. Your tape diagram can help you build that, uh, that little piece there. Okay, so hopefully you understand that. And again, this is just one way. Like Lots of kids will take it apart in different ways. I'm not saying this is the only way by any means. I'm just saying this is one way that you can solve it. You can also find out all these pieces and then kind of gradually subtract. A lot of kids will do that too. That's fine. Anyway, moving right along because we have a lot to do today. Riverside Elementary School is holding a school-wide election to choose a school color. Five-eighths of the votes were for blue. Five-ninths of the remaining votes were for green. And the remaining 48 votes, that's going to be important, were for red. So they're telling you how many, how many votes were for blue. So let's start with a tape diagram again. And we have, um, we don't have the total number of votes, so we can't really label that. We're going to work our way there. We do know 48, and then we have fractional units. So 5 eighths are for blue. Why don't we start out? By making eighths, one, two, three, four, five, blue. Whenever you know something, just label it, okay? So five eighths of the votes are for blue. These are all done and kind of taken care of. It's not so much about the shading and the cross shading here as it is just about identifying what pieces we're using and what pieces are used already. So what's left is that I have three-eighths left, okay? So five-ninths of the remaining votes. Five-ninths of the remaining votes. So three-eighths remain, and we're going to take five-ninths of that. So if you recognize that if you were to, say, write this, and switch the location, remember, because of the commutative property, you can change the order of the factors. Then you have 3 ninths, which is equal to 1 third. Multiplying across, you end up with the fact that 5 twenty-fourths uh, are for green. So what does that mean? So we'll have to figure that out. Okay, so now that could potentially be a lot of pieces, but that's, that's okay. We've got our um, ninths, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sorry, eighths, five eighths, five eighths. These, this is eight eighths, okay? And so I've got five twenty-fourths. So if I have twenty-fourths, but it's in eight parts, how many pieces would be in eight, eight each eighth? I can talk been doing it for years. So that would be 3. So let's take our 24 and divide it by 8 to get the 3. That's what I'm doing here. And I'm saying, okay, well, if each eighth is in three parts, then I have all the 24ths. So I could actually mark now if all this is blue, and you can use, you know, colored pens and whatnot to kind of keep track of what you're doing then 5 24ths would be for green. Now, if these all became 24ths all the way across, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I can come from the other side just to kind of keep it clear so that 5 24ths are green. Okay, that's down here. We still have more. The remaining 48 votes were for red. One, two, three, four. Hmm. Four twenty-fourths are red. 
right? Because now if we have all these 24ths, which I could continue to mark here if you want to, if it makes you feel comfortable, now it's all 24ths all the way across. And one, two, three, four of them are for red, but they're giving us this number. These are 48 and they're red. So it's really four, that probably is confusing you because we don't actually need that number. We just need that 48 are red and 48 are four of the 24ths. Now this goes back to the bottom of that one lesson. I don't know, I can't remember what number it is. It's been like five lessons ago where it says, if this is the number, then what would be the part? So now I'm looking at 48 divided into four pieces because I want to know really how much the value is of each piece. So 48 divided by four is 12. That means that I finally have a number for each of these tiny little pieces. I know you probably can't even see it on the video because it's so small and it is so small. But just know that if 48 is the red and it's divided by fourths, and so we have 12 in each piece, now I can do the uh, find out how many votes for all the pieces. So if I have, and you can kind of break it up, because each of these, okay, remember, it's three of the small ones. So every time I have three of the small ones, that's 12 times three, if you wanna break it up like that. And then I have one, two, three, four, five of those. And then we end up with our 180 votes for blue. And again, you might not have seen it that way this is just one way to get there. Just kind of take it apart, break it up into sections, and then put it back together. How about how many votes were for green? Now again, because we know that 12 is one of the 24ths, then it would be one, two, three, four, five. So it's 12 times five. Once you know one, you can know the size of any. Okay, which leads us to the next part. Now this whole thing just keeps going on the back. It's kind of crazy. So we'll go back there in a minute. If every student got one vote, but there were 25 students absent on the day of the vote, how many students are there at Riverside Elementary School? So we have blue, we have green, we have red. We also have absent students. And each one of these has a number. I'll turn back. Blue is 180, green is 60. Red was 48. And now we have 25 students absent. So don't forget to include those. And this is basically just an addition problem. So if you didn't do it yet, pause the video, make your addition and then turn it back on and check and see how you did. All right, welcome back. And if you're gonna put these together, try to make groups of 10 as always, six and four is 10, that's 18, 19, 20, 21, and three. And so hopefully you got 313. Then, moving right along with the votes still, seven-tenths of the votes for blue, now how many votes were for blue? It's right up here, 180, were made by girls, okay? Seven-tenths of 180 votes were made by girls. This is the girls, okay? That's what we're going to get there because there's more. Did girls who voted for blue, when we find this out, make up more than or less than half of all the votes? So now that's the students in all, but how many were votes? Remember the 25 students did not vote. So you can go back up here, remove the 25 students who were absent, 
You'll have to regroup. That's not two, okay? So you have to go here, take one and give 10. From 13, uh, subtract five. Uh, from here, you can't take two because there's nothing there. So go here, take one and give 10. Subtract, bring down. With our 288 votes, okay, that can come down here. We're looking to compare with half, half of 288. Now that should be pretty easy for you to kind of eyeball and see that. This would be one of those cross-canceling opportunities. Two fits into two one time, two fits into two once, and then eight four and eight four. So it's 144 is half. Now we have to come back here and figure out how many girls voted for blue. So it's 7 tenths of 180. Now if I was to rewrite this and do 7 times 180 over 10, I would shift that 10 over and I would just simplify right here and do 180 divided by 10. And of course, we're going to just take off those zeros and then I get the 18 over 1. And I really am stuck with or left with <laughs> uh, 18 times 7. 8 times 7 being 56 if you know your facts. 7 times 1 7. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And so that 7 tenths of 180 would be the 126 votes that were made by girls. And we're going to compare that. So it's a 126 compared with 144. And that's what they're, they're asking you to do. Now, um, this is less than half, so it says support your reasoning with a picture. Uh, okay, picture, tape diagram. So we go back to the blue um, being five-eighths of the votes. So make eighths again. One, two, three, four, five. That's blue. Okay, and uh, this is going to be everybody who is not voting for blue, the rest. But within this blue, we have seven tenths that are girls. Now, it's fortunately that it's five. One, two, three, four, five. So you can divide each section into two. So we can get our seven tenths, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That are the girls. Okay, and then you can label that up here, right there. You could also continue dividing each of these to see all the pieces, but the halfway point is gonna be a little bit further out and so you can see that the amount of girls that voted for blue is less than half of the kids who voted for everything else, including uh, the boys that voted for blue. So anyway, that one is done, and then you can move on. And finally, how many girls voted for blue? So uh, this one, a couple different ways. You can do the 7 tenths of the total number of votes for blue, which we kind of already solved. And again, simplify. A 126 girls voted for blue. Kind of redundant, again, and especially if you do it here and you're looking at the picture. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. Tough lesson today, but uh, hopefully you're kind of getting the hang of it, really just using the tape diagrams um, to help you find the part, and part of the whole. <sighs> Click subscribe, come back again. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.